Hey guys, it's Jack here from Abletunes.com and in this video we're going to be taking a look at THX's audio logo, Deep Note, which you've probably heard if you've seen any movies in the past 30 years or so. And it sounds a bit like this. And this is the version I prepared earlier in Massive, which sounds like this. So not exactly the same sound, but definitely quite a close approximation, considering we've um, made it in Massive. So, to have a look at how I went about making this sound, it's good to start with the most stable part of the THX sound and then work sound design from there. So for this THX sound, the most stable part of the sound is when we reach that big octave spread which happens just right about here. It's there. So the first step is trying to find the pitch of that part which if we just have a look in our test in here, it's around about an E4. It's actually about 30 cents higher, but we'll just go with E4 for now. So if you have a look in the massive patch, I have programmed an E into it, which is actually an E2, but because of the wavetables, I'm using sound an octave higher, and I've also got unison, unisono spreading them out another octave, uh, the end result actually ends up being an E4, so that's where we want it. So if I just take all the pitch automation out of the picture, just taking off the oscillator slides, just muting everything there. We should get something a bit like the end of the THX sound if we just play it in the right sense. So we've got that kind of last big octave spread which will sound even bigger with the unisono but for now we're in, we're in the right ballpark with pitch so it can kind of work from there. Now trying to find the pitch of the start of the THX week is a little bit more difficult because all the pitches are, are a bit close together. Like, just be like that. Luckily enough, Wikipedia has a patent description for Deep Note on its article for Deep Note, which says the sweep is in 30 voices and it starts on notes spread out between 200 and 400 hertz. So again, if we have another look at our little test synth here, and we just plug that 200 frequency in, we get uh, G3, so remembering our massive synth sounds an octave higher than written, um, we'll need to kind of plug it in between G2 and the equivalent of that for 400 hertz, which would be uh, G3, an octave lower than G4. So what I've done in the synth is actually set up an envelope which starts the pitches up quite a bit higher than their final pitches and then brings them down over the course of the sound. So the one at zero up here is seven up, so that's about um, a B3, and the one at, uh, the second one is 11, 14 up from 12, so it's playing an F sharp three, and this one here is 29 up from about 24, so it's playing like an A. So they're all kind of split up between those two Gs, G2 and G3. So if you actually add in the pitch automation there, you can kind of hear it all starts as a bit of a cluster and then we get them spreading down as the envelope makes its way down. So those three pitches there, the 0 0.37, 11.63, 23.63, but basically just three octaves spread. Alrighty, so the last thing I have to do with regards to changing voices and changing pitches around is using the unisono tool to get all the required pitch voices that we need out of Massive. So what the unison will actually do is we'll create as many voices as you plug into that parameter, um, the unison parameter. So if you make the unison 4, we'll get four identical oscillators for each oscillator that you see on the left. So we've got oscillator 1 with four copies, oscillator 2 with four copies, oscillator 3 with co four copies. So how that's useful is that we can change the pitch of each one slightly using the pitch cutoff slider so that they're all spread out. And the best thing about this parameter is the limit of the spread is actually an octave, which is perfect for this sound. 
So I've made it very close to an octave at the end here because a perfect octave ends up sounding a bit sterile, but I've basically got it going so we move from them not being different pitches at all and then slowly moving outwards until they're all spaced an octave apart. So it starts with all the pitches all together and then spreading all the way out. And that gives us our final product here, which again, sounds a bit like this. So there you have it, that's it. Uh, I've used the Polysaw 1 wavetables with the wavetables position all the way to the left and the intensity all the way to the right. But I have used the envelope to kind of attenuate the intensity a bit at the start. Just because I found that, and I'll just mute sounds to kind of demonstrate this. With all the pitches so close together at the very start, it does sound very harsh. So it is just kind of good to mellow that out. But yeah, that's the uh, basic principle of making something like THX's steep note. And of course, you can always change the oscillators I've selected to your own personal preference sound-wise. You can really change it to anything. Uh, it's usually better if they're the same oscillator, of course, but you can make a whole bunch of different, similar sounds. And yeah, it does kind of get you thinking about what you can do with, with the uh, voicing and pitch shifting in Max. And that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching and uh, remember to subscribe to us if you like this video and want to see more stuff from us in the future.